I've been getting more and more interested in women's health, just given that I am one. And I'm also taking some awesome classes over at the Wellness Forum Institute with Dr. Pam Popper. And she really opened my eyes to how scary the medical establishment is. Because they seem to believe that women are somehow born defective. It's like we get a free pass for the first nine or ten years of our lives, but after that we just turn into a hormonal basket case in need of pharmaceutical intervention. Why is this? Why does the female body seem to be so flawed in being balanced and effective throughout its life? Well, for starters, our society as a whole eats a horrible diet. It's loaded with saturated fat, processed sugars, excessive amounts of acidifying protein, and animal foods that are loaded with hormones. This diet is so high in fat and low in fiber that it leads to weight gain, and surprise surprise, excess body fat pumps out hormones too. Our liver has to work overtime to bind these hormones and try to get rid of them via our digestive tract, but due to the insane lack of fiber in the standard American diet, these waste hormones end up stuck in our intestines for days and they inevitably get reabsorbed back into the bloodstream where they continue to wreak havoc. Which is probably why girls are starting to go through puberty at earlier and earlier ages. As young as age 8 isn't uncommon anymore. But it is a far cry away from the average age of menarche in the 1950s, which was a healthy 16 years old. This might seem like little more than an inconvenience, but when you consider that women are going through menopause at later and later ages, now usually in their mid to late 50s instead of early 40s, you realize that a woman's lifelong estrogen exposure is significantly higher than it was even just 60 years ago. And when you take into account the unnecessarily high estrogen levels most women are suffering with, you'll understand how estrogen saturated your average westernized woman is these days. These soaring estrogen levels are a big part of why being a woman is turning into a disease. And in a few minutes we'll talk about how you can effectively lower your estrogen exposure and safeguard your health. So even if we're lucky to stave off puberty until our early teens, we quickly turn into these moody, bloated, cramping little bundles of frustration and pain. PMS symptoms go insane. Period pains become unbearable, skin eruptions become uncontrollable, pads are soaked through every hour, and what was supposed to be a predictable monthly cycle turns into Tampax's version of roulette. It's not a good look, and no one can be faulted for trying to ease these symptoms. But unfortunately, staying true to the pattern of modern medicine, a doctor's idea of solving the problem is to write a prescription for more hormones. And it's not your fault if this doesn't make sense to you, because it actually just doesn't make sense. This is the beginning of treating a woman's body like it doesn't know what it's doing. Like it was born broken, inept, and in need of medical help. Now enter the oral contraceptive pill. It was a boon for women in need of effective birth control in the 60s, but with overprescribing and increasingly poor diet, this boon has turned into a bane for young women with out-of-whack cycles. First of all, our endocrine system, that's the body system that's primarily responsible for hormonal regulation throughout the body, is very sensitive. It doesn't do well with exogenous hormones, meaning hormones from outside the body. The first hormonal assault on this delicate system are the hormonally saturated animal foods that we feed our kids usually three times a day. The second assault is excess body fat pumping out more hormones. The third assault, these little pills containing estrogen and progesterone bombs that trick our bodies into thinking we're pregnant all the time. Most pills are designed to create a monthly cycle so that it resembles a woman's natural cycle, but now there are these types available that prevent your period indefinitely. Which is, I'm not going to lie, a brilliant idea in theory, 
but unfortunately leads to further imbalance and future pain. These pills are prescribed to correct the symptoms of a hormonal imbalance, but they do not correct the underlying problem. So while they're covering up these symptoms, the hormonal excess actually gets worse. And at some point, most women will choose to become a mother. Unfortunately, millions of women are struggling with infertility, which isn't surprising when you consider how screwed up our hormonal systems are from all the animal product-laden foods, excess fat tissues, and birth control pills they've been taking for years. So what we have is infertility caused by hormonal imbalance. And do you know what the medical establishment has come up with to treat these imbalances? More hormones. Is it going to solve the underlying problem? Nope. But modern medicine doesn't think there is an underlying solvable problem. It just assumes that we're born broken. So even if you do get pregnant when you want to, pregnancy has in fact turned into its own disease with painful and often dangerous symptoms. It's now considered somehow okay to gain 50 plus pounds with a single pregnancy, but unfortunately excessive weight gain during pregnancy leads to serious complications. Gestational diabetes, preeclampsia, higher risks of infection, overdue labor, and birthing complications are all risks associated with higher weight both before and during pregnancy. And your weight gain also equates to your baby's weight gain, leading to bigger and bigger babies. Which might sound okay, but in reality, higher birth rate is linked with more labor complications, more emergency c-sections, and higher rates of overweight and obesity as your child grows up. So once you're done with childbearing, you will be gifted a break from the monthly hell of your painful periods. And that's exactly how women used to view menopause. It was a gift. Unfortunately, a transition that was evolutionarily meant to be liberating and easy turned into a gauntlet of disturbing symptoms, pain, and danger. Hot flashes, night sweats, emotional outbursts, heavy bleeding, increased cancer risk, and as an added bonus, your vagina starts to mimic a raisin. And how? Might you ask, does the medical community valiantly fix our plight? More hormones, yeah. Or a surgery to remove your reproductive organs. Wow, you guys are master problem solvers. Instead of trying to help women with the transition of menopause, doctors try to reverse menopause by dosing women with exogenous estrogens and progesterone, they even bring back women's periods. And of all things I want to be doing when I'm 60 years old, having my period is not one of them. But hey, it's kind of great. Hot flashes go away and you stop acting like such a bitch and you can recognize your vagina again. Unfortunately, all of those symptoms come back as soon as you stop taking the HRT, but it comes at a cost. And that cost is kind of a big deal. Yeah, it's the big C. Cancer. Higher and longer hormonal exposure equals hormonally sensitive cancers. Breast cancer, endometrial cancer, ovarian cancer, uterine cancer. The risks are higher with HRT. It's an accepted fact, regardless of whether or not your doctor remembered to mention it to you in your five minute appointment slash prescription writing session. And while I don't have time to delve into the bioidentical hormone catastrophe, please rest assured, prolonged estrogen exposure, regardless of the source, leads you down one path and that path is increased cancer risk. Which is why it's so important to get a mammogram every year, right? Those save lives, right? Well, unfortunately, no. <laughs> Mammograms do not save lives. Mammograms are not effective at reliably identifying fast-growing, aggressive breast cancer. What mammograms excel at is finding non-dangerous growths called ductal carcinoma in situ, which are then treated as if they were dangerous cancer. And mammograms do nothing 
to prevent breast cancer, yet they do involve radiation and extreme compression of tissues, including benign tumors, both of which can lead to real, deadly cancer. So, you might wonder, with mammograms being so ineffective, why are breast cancer survival rates so much better after widespread mammograms were introduced? It's because when a woman is diagnosed with breast cancer, but in reality she only has ductal carcinoma in situ, she is treated as a cancer patient. And once she's free of the cancer that she never actually had and doesn't die of breast cancer within the next five years, she becomes a life saved. She becomes a survivor. And that's true for all breast cancer patients. Even breast cancer patients who did actually have cancer, if they survive for five years, they are considered a success story. If they die five years and one day later, they're still considered a survivor. Which leads to a potentially more pertinent question. How in God's name do doctors and organizations like the American Cancer Society get away with this? That topic alone could be the subject of 10 videos, but the short answer is an uninformed public and money. What about women with the BRCA1 and 2 genes? They can't help it if they get breast cancer. Wrong! Purely genetic breast cancer rates account for about 2% of cases. You'd be much better served by worrying about whether or not the junk food you feed yourself will kill you rather than wondering whether or not your genes can kill you. Women are dropping like flies from cancer. They weren't a hundred years ago. Our genes have not changed since then, but our environment has. Our food has. You're not going to get cancer purely because your genes are flawed. You're going to get cancer because you took part in Susan G. Komen Foundation's Bucket for the Cures promotion with KFC. We have been duped. And it doesn't end with cancer. Because as much money as there is to make off a cancer patient, there's still more money to be made from crumbling bones. When a woman leaves her childbearing years, it's completely natural to lose bone mass. This natural process went through the big pharma PR mill and emerged as a disease. Osteoporosis, the silent killer. Because your body is so flawed that even while consuming the recommended three daily glasses of calcium-rich cow's milk, your bones still erode out from under you. The answer to osteoporosis, doctors claim, does not lay in a better diet, more exercise, or stronger muscles. No, the answer comes from your pharmacist. Bosanax. They didn't even try to hide the fact that it literally fossilizes you. Which is a fun effect you might not notice while you're suffering through this drug's other myriad side effects. Fosamax slows down natural bone destruction, which is a necessary process because bone destruction stimulates bone creation. Your bones become more dense while you're on Fosamax, yes, but they also become incredibly weak. And what is it that weak bones are prone to? Fractures, yeah. It's fractures, bone fractures. So instead of cutting down on the acidic animal foods like milk that force the body to pull alkaline calcium from our bones, we're told to choke down a horrendous drug that leaves us more prone to fractures than if we had just taken a placebo. In the case of preventing bone fractures, it's literally more effective to wrap yourself in bubble wrap than take Fosamax. Sounds reasonable. After recounting what it's like to be a woman these days, one might ask, how did this happen? How did evolution produce one half of a species that's so flawed that they can barely function for two weeks every month? They can barely conceive, they can barely keep the baby or herself alive during a pregnancy without major medical intervention, only to explode into cancers caused by her own natural sex hormones, and then literally fall apart during and after menopause. The answer, of course, is that evolution didn't create this monstrous fuck-up. Modern society and modern medicine 
screws us big time. So what's the better way? You eat real food, you drink clean water, you avoid doctors. <laughs> but let me elaborate a little more. I'm not sure where common sense went, but it's impossible to feed your body a highly processed, unrecognizable faux food and expect a good outcome. If you want a healthy body that feels great and functions like it's supposed to, you have to feed it healthy, nutritious, whole food. So let's define nutritious food, since that seems to be a bit of a mystery these days. Meat and dairy are full of saturated fats, acidifying protein, cholesterol, and bacteria. They're not nutritious, they're not necessary, and they are not safe foods to consume. I'll repeat that. Meat and dairy are not safe substances to consume. Plants, however, are full of health-promoting vitamins, minerals, carbohydrates, clean proteins, and fiber all of which are linked to lower rates of cancers, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and importantly, lower sex hormones in women. If we stick to a whole food, plant-based diet, our female bodies very naturally and very easily come into a beautiful balance. Puberty is postponed until a reasonable time, menstruation becomes regular, painless, and light, pregnancy becomes pleasant, Childbirth is much safer. Menopause is a liberating experience that shows up when it's supposed to. Cancer risk plummets and bones stay strong. There are a few age-specific details that I'd like to go over with you, like natural birth control methods. Instead of oral contraceptives, a woman in a monogamous relationship can use ovulation charting methods or this awesome little device called a lady comp to track their cycles and prevent pregnancy. Women who are active in the dating world will be better served by consistent use of condoms. It is prudent to say that a truly helpful and life-saving test is the pap smear, which is safely performed every three to five years for low-risk women, and more often for women who have had a previous positive result. Active surveillance, a whole food plant-based diet, and the cessation of smoking Cervical dysplasia clears up on its own. Issues like infertility, polycystic ovarian syndrome, and many other hormonally sensitive conditions that affect young women are very responsive to dietary shifts, weight loss, and exercise. During pregnancy, a weight gain of 15 to 25 pounds is considered safe. Even though you're eating for two, it realistically only takes about 70,000 calories to grow a baby which equates to about 275 extra calories per day in the last two trimesters only, which would equate to about one and a half cups of brown rice per day. So sorry, but the giant tub of haagen and pickles is not really necessary or safe. How you choose to birth your child is obviously your personal choice. Home births with a midwife, doula, or physician that has earned your trust is perfectly safe and possibly even safer than a hospital delivery. If painful menopause is causing trouble, clean up your diet as soon as possible. Talk to an acupuncturist or an herbalist about helpful herbal remedies for symptom relief. And if your symptoms are really intense, you can rest assured that your body has been exposed to high levels of hormones. So now is the time to make those big changes that will help to prevent those looming cancers, cardiovascular disease, and osteoporosis. As soon as you can, adopt a whole food plant-based diet and begin regular exercise program. Above all, remember that you were not born defective. And if your body is in a state of imbalance or pain, it's because you're not providing it with the correct inputs. Whole plant foods, clean water, adequate rest. Your health is your responsibility. Even though doctors and the pharmaceutical industry have been completely irresponsible with their treatment of women, it is still your choice to make the big changes that you need to to revolutionize your life. No one's going to do it for you, and no one said it was easy. It's up to you to make the commitment to yourself, to your health, and to your family. If you're curious about this type of vegan lifestyle, I encourage you to check out more of my videos as well as the links that I have listed down below. Please give this video a thumbs up if you have found it helpful and feel free to post any and all questions down below in the comment section. It can get quite lively down there. Mahalo for watching and remember, make better choices.
Your quality of life depends on it.